<laughs> and then you could just chop it whenever you really start. All right, and action. All right, welcome to episode two. Uh, we showed you how to mark out the house and lay out everything. I've already done that in this house. Unfortunately, I just can't stay on the same house too long. But here we are at a great southern single family home. And we're going to go through low box in the house. I've already marked it out. But I haven't marked the heights yet. And hopefully I can print out a little page and have it up in the video to where you can see like all the heights. We're going to get started. Come on. All right, switches I usually have at 48 to the top of the box. So we're just gonna go through here and we're just gonna mark all the heights up so I can just, so I can throw everything up really fast. Right. And we can speed through this. Okay. This is just a lot of. Do I have to tap the screen? No, you don't. You just record if you want. Okay. But I like seeing what I'm... Oh, shit. I'm gonna trip. Okay, these receptacles in here, they're gonna be horizontal, so I have to mark a height on them because I'm not gonna do them at hammer height. And I'm gonna put them at 18 inches. Already fucking up. <laughs> okay, with outside receptacles, I don't really care at what height I put them at. Like, if there's only one receptacle for the porch, like as long as you can't see two outside receptacles by standing back from it, like you don't want them all fucked up in different heights. But if they are right next to each other, like this plan almost next to each other, I'm going to put them at the same height so they don't look jacked up. From the so I'm just gonna make up a measurement because I want to keep it under the window. So I'm gonna say 12. 12. I got another horizontal right here. 18. And back to normal. I'm not marking the heights on the receptacles because it's just gonna be at hammer height. So. So we're in the kitchen, we gotta keep the receptacles up high, so that's gonna be at 48, just like the switches. And it's really important in the kitchen to keep the receptacles exactly the same. Like you have to, they have to be perfect because when they put a backsplash up, they're, um, when they put a backsplash up at the end, you'll be able to see like from the lines of the tile and you'll be able to see if like one's higher or lower than each other. So like when things are really close and up high next to each other, you gotta make sure that you get the right height. Okay, so in the kitchen, I talked about keeping the receptacles in a certain spot, but by code, you have to have one within the edge of the counter, two foot. And then every receptacle back there has to be within four foot of each other. I could stretch this out a little further, but I think it's gonna look like shit. So I'm gonna start with this one right here, and I'm gonna add another one in here. I could stretch it out and be two foot off of this, but I think it's just gonna look better with three and it gives you more places to plug in. Okay, on these high bar top, tops right here, we're gonna end up only keeping one two by four up top, so we're gonna notch out this bottom one because when they come by and they put up uh, their granite or whatever they're gonna do, it's gonna raise it up a little bit. So we gotta cut one out so it's not riding the bottom of the counter. So we got some stuff going right here. We'll end up putting disposal there. This box is right here. But we can, we can move on. This is the laundry room. Got some switches. Oh, 
And then I put the dryer at 33, just a little bit down low. And then the washer goes up high, 48. Okay, with the island, there's no sink going here, and it's just cabinets. And when there's no sink in the island of the kitchen, all we need is that one receptacle down low, and that'll pass code for it. So as long as we got all, see, we got our pipe ran right here, which I don't know where it's going. But uh, we can find that out later. We'll have to run UF for that receptacle. All right, this house is a little weird. I noticed on the plan that they have like this little butler pantry right here. I'm guessing they got like a little countertop and a little sink going in. I don't know what's up with that, but I'm just gonna follow the plans as usual. All right, into this room. So all we're doing is just marking out the heights of where the switches are going and the up high receptacles. Just so I don't have to stop them once I start. Okay. <clears throat> In the bathroom, we need a receptacle for every sink bowl there's going to be. So we're just putting one on each side because this is the master bathroom. So we need one receptacle on each side. Okay, and I have a weatherproof right here. And like I said, up there at the front door, all we need, well, we don't need a height for this one. We can just guess it and throw it up there because there's only one receptacle. You're not gonna see the difference between the back door and the front door. Nobody's gonna go up there and measure unless you're super OCD. Then why are you in the house? And I see a lot of people like they got, if you go into like these places that have been done really cheap, like, I don't care what you get paid on a job. Just make sure everything is like consistent throughout the house. Like no matter what, you gotta get that there. You just gotta make it happen. Okay. But start boxing. <laughs> Okay, these boxes, all these boxes have little notches on them and they just help you butt up next to it. And when you're done boxing, like you wanna make sure that it's tight on the wall, not inside the wall because it'll get covered up by the sheet rockers, but make sure like it pokes out that quarter wrench that it gives you on these notches. Starting off as being a bitch. So, like I said, I use my hammer to measure the receptacles. So, just like I just set it down there, it's about 13 inches. Some guys, sometimes new guys don't, sometimes new guys don't understand that concept. And it might be easier to mark out a height for them to follow. That way you can walk past it and you can see whether it's on the mark. Trust me, there's a lot of dumbass dudes out there doing this type of work.
TV is going to be at the same height, just hammer height. And if you don't get the same height, you'll definitely be able to notice like a difference when you're backed away from it. Especially when you get plates on it and it's all finished with the sheet rock, you can tell. So it's important to get just right. The lighting's so bad. The window makes the lighting bad right there. It's good. What? It's gotta be on me. I don't have to be on you or you want me to be on no, you? No, you don't have to be on me like that. Okay. Okay, so I threw, I drew the three switches right here. That means I need a switch for the vanity, switch for the tub light, and a switch for the fan. So three S's means I need a three gang, which is gonna be three different switches. One, two, three. All right, right here, uh, this is uh, only one stud in the corner. And when you have this, you need to have at least two in a corner. Three in a door, two in a corner. So I've already cut my blocks and I threw them out where I needed it. And you want to make sure your blocks sit in flush because they do have to put sheetrock up against this. I got a little block here and I, I got some pipes right here so I don't want to put it on this right side and this just seems too far so I need to get rid of this. Sometimes these two by fours are a little fucked up right there. So you want to make sure you watch your edge of the box and make sure that it's sticking out just the right amount. Yeah, I know this says five switches. I got different things going in here, but all we're gonna use is a four gang because I don't wanna add another box and I don't wanna do nothing too crazy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a stack switch in here later on.
I know I'm beating on these kind of hard, but they are fragile, so got to be careful. Especially when it's cold. <laughs> yeah, I need another block right there. And this is seriously one of the easiest jobs there is in the house. Like, this is the perfect beginner's job. It shouldn't take you very long. You shouldn't be spending all day doing this. If it takes you all day to low box, I'm gonna wonder what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> I know this looks stupid, but I chose to add another receptacle right over here because I didn't want the TV to be too close to the door. Okay, this is a little trick that I do whenever I'm trying to put something on the OSB on the opposite side. Just flip these nails around. Right here, uh, I see this problem all the time. I don't have a four gang box, but when I do, I'm gonna put it up here and there's, and there's not gonna be enough room. And some people would take the easy way right, move it down or move it up, but I'm OCD sometimes, so I gotta. So I could beat the fuck out of this and then break this OSB potentially, or you could just. Around here, turn 
have them right here. Some 3D. Okay. And it just falls out. Damn, got another situation like this. All right, but instead of taking this whole block out, we're just gonna take out what we need. So we're gonna go around here. Tight spots can be tricky. And it's important to pay close attention to your planes when you're marking out or you might forget this stupid receptacle that somebody wants in their closet. Now I say three in a door, and I'll put this on the other side, but like this isn't quite three two by fours, but it's really just a little bit of distance that makes the world. We say a three just to keep you safe. And, and in spots like this, I can put it closer to the door and everything like that. Everything. But in this situation, just put it over here, make it easier on you.
Yeah. I'll talk louder. <laughs> Is it okay? There's that little stupid sink area. These receptacles have to be up high. Now on the back side of these bars, these receptacles are going to be down low also. I think Ramon's looking for something. <laughs> okay, right here, I don't see this bar too often, but when I do, I automatically know that I told you we gotta keep, it's just the one up. So we're just gonna notch out, we're gonna take out a little piece and we're gonna bump the box up right here. But before we go into cutting this, I like to add some nails just so this does, does, doesn't fall apart whenever I go to work on it. So what I like to do is I know that I'm going to cut out this little area right here. This little area. This little area. So I know I'm going to cut out those little areas. So what I'll do is I'll take two nails and put one on each side. It'll, it'll help hold it together a little better after you cut. After you cut. See right there, it's going to be almost an inch out.
And the same thing goes for anything that's going to be in cabinet. Also, you have to pull it out because the cabinet guys are really shitty. And if you don't, if you don't pull it out a little bit, then that means they're only probably going to cut this little hole. And you're going to be up there in that shitty little cabinet with a shitty little saw trying to cut out this big ass hole. So like right here, this is my disposal, and I know the cabinet's going to go right up against it. And I got plenty of room. So with disposal, you just want to pull it out just like we did with those ones. But the same doesn't go for the dishwasher, even though it's like right in the same area, it only gets a drywall vacuum. So it goes right up there to the ears. And this one, and right here in the backsplash area, I don't know if it's getting a backsplash, but it probably is. But just to be safe, I'm gonna put it right on the ears. Mm -hmm. I'll fix that later. Mm -hmm. And for this double oven, that wire I'm going to run, it's not going to need a box. It's just going to get stubbed out. We'll put a 4x4 metal box on it later. I know what a two gang is. What? And for a dry receptacle, it gets a two gang. Keep everything up at 48 to the top. Sorry, I don't know where you're going next, you know? That's it? That's it. Should I stop it? 